Welcome to another edition of Green is Good, and we're so honored to have with us today Scott Beckerman. He's the Senior Vice President and Director of Corporate Sustainability at Coal America Bank. Welcome to Green is Good, Scott. Well, thank you very much. Pleasure to be here. Hey, you know, Scott, before we get talking about Coal America and the iconic brand that you represent, talk a little bit about the Scott Beckerman story and your journey in sustainability and your journey in life. Well, as a kid uh, growing up in the Detroit area, I thought I was going to be an, an automotive engineer. Um, but one of, during, during one of the recessions, we uh, ended up taking a summer job managing asbestos abatement projects in public schools. And that really kind of opened my eyes to the uh, effects of environmental issues. also had an opportunity to travel to the Far East in college with the uh, Men's Glee Club from the University of Michigan. Got wow. to see some beautiful country. Uh, but some countries that had some horrible pollution challenges. Uh, so when I got back, I, I kind of changed my career path a little bit uh, away from the automotive engineering and, and ended up getting my master's degree in environmental and water resources engineering. Ultimately led to a career in consulting and, and an opportunity to join the Comerica team a few years back. Interesting. And can you, for our listeners out there who maybe haven't heard of Coal America, can you share a little bit about the great brand that you represent, Coal America? Sure, sure. Coal America is a uh, super regional bank. We're headquartered in Dallas, Texas, with our core operations in five states uh, Michigan, Texas, California, Florida, and Arizona. Our roots go back to uh, 1849 as Detroit Savings Fund, and I think on the first day we took in $41 of deposits. Uh, So we've obviously grown a bit over the years. We now have about $69 billion in assets and are the uh, 11th largest commercial and industrial lender in the United States. Wow. And for our listeners out there that would like to learn more about Coal America, you could go to coalamerica.com, C-O-M-E-R-I-C-A.com, and to learn more about what we're going to be talking about with Scott today, you could go to coamerica.com backslash sustainability. Talk a little bit about Coamerica's approach to sustainability. Let's hear just the macro overview, Scott, before we get into more specific questions. Sure. The, um, the way Comerica approaches sustainability, it's a fairly standard definition, but it's really a, a way of doing business that meets the needs of today in a way that doesn't compromise the ability of future generations to meet their needs. Hmm. Um, We really want to take a holistic look at corporate sustainability. Uh, We have to consider not only the environmental issues, but the social governance and economic issues, too. Uh, It's really what our stakeholders are expecting from us. Yeah, there's a, a wide range of topics. Um, you know, whether it's our carbon footprint or cybersecurity and data protection, diversity, all of those things uh, are really interrelated in our approach to sustainable business. So it's really, like you said, when it's holistic, it means nowadays social and environmental all wrapped up in one. Right. And if you, if you look at the issues closely, uh, it's hard to really separate them. They, they have an impact on each other. Uh, and it's hard to have vibrant communities if we're not taking care of both the social and environmental needs. You know, Scott, when I started the show back um, in 2009, a lot of big brands didn't even have directors of corporate sustainability or chief sustainability officers. Now, now that seems to be a, a growing title and a growing position. And a lot of students that I meet or speak with along the way now are aiming for those positions, the position that you have. Can you share a little bit about... Coal America's journey, when did they start first taking their first steps towards sustainability, and when did they actually create the role that you now have of Director of Corporate Sustainability? Well, for us, we've been doing various elements of of sustainability for decades. We've had a a comprehensive approach to diversity. We were doing really great things in in credit risk management and looking at environmental Mm -hmm. issues from that perspective. But what we didn't have was really that integrated approach. So our program was launched in 2008 after a 2007 shareholder resolution that called on the bank to prepare a sustainability report and start taking more of an integrated approach to sustainability. That opened up our eyes to to the expectation of our stakeholders and the opportunity that we saw by taking that integrated approach to sustainability. Gotcha. And that report now, I'm looking right in here on your on your website, 
Again, for our listeners out there, it's Co-America, C-O-M-E-R-I-C-A dot com backslash sustainability. Those reports are published right on your website, very transparently. Yes, that's correct. And and that's a big part of, of what we were doing and, and the shift that we wanted to make um, from knowing that we were doing all these uh, great things, but actually getting out and talking about them and, and demonstrating some of the things that we're doing. From those first overt steps that they um, were, were, you know, were making, when when did they actually create create the Office of Director of Corporate Response of Sustainability? Yeah, that came along in in 2008 uh, when we same set up time the program. Yeah, got it. We took a really a strategic approach and wanted to craft this into our our business strategy. We recognized that if we didn't approach sustainability as a way to create value, mm. uh, then it was just another corporate initiative that was liable to go by the wayside when, when people quit, uh, quit paying attention to it. Um, but we really looked at it from a value creation approach and are, are focused on you know, knowledge and innovation, cost and risk reduction, opportunities and revenues, and, and really ways to enhance our reputation and brand. So let's talk about fast forward to where we are today. It's 2015. You've got X amount of years, six, seven, eight years in, in, the, in the rearview mirror now. Talk a little bit about Call America's environmental footprint. What does it look like, and how do you go about managing it? What's your approach to managing your, uh, Call America's envir- environmental footprint? The, uh, the the approach that we take may not sound super exciting, uh, but it's really <laughs> it's really based on incremental progress, and it's okay. based on making progress each year in a broad variety of areas. And as the years have rolled on, uh, that's really begun to add up for us in, in really meaningful ways. Um, we operate about 500 buildings across the country. Wow. Um, and so our, our footprint environmentally is really related to the energy usage of our offices and data centers and bank branches. Uh, we set our first greenhouse gas reduction goal of 50%, 15%, excuse me, mm. uh, by 2014. And we were able to get past that um, by achieving 19% reduction by the end of 2013. Uh, so we were able to, to beat our own goal, uh, which just prompts us to set more goals. And, and this year we'll be releasing a new goal, not only on greenhouse gas emissions, but we're also adding water reduction, waste reduction, and paper usage uh, reduction components to our goals as well. Okay, so the ones you started with, uh, you have these 500 buildings. So, talk a little bit about. I'm on your I'm on your uh, sustainability report now. So I'm looking at all these different subsectors. So t- you know, so you have paper consumption. How do you go about reducing your paper consumption? What's your approach to that? Well, paper for us is one of our largest uh, largest purchases and consumable products. So we're always yeah. looking for ways to reduce paper. Um, Sometimes it's really easy. Sometimes it's as simple as pausing to ask yourself, you know, do I really need to print that or do I really need to print that in color? Uh, mm. Can I take my laptop or my mobile device with me to a meeting and instead of printing out a, a deck of slides uh, to distribute to a bunch of folks? Um, simple steps like that can, can help move the needle for us. But we've also really looked at redesigning our, our processes and operations uh, specifically to avoid printing um, and, and consuming paper, it's helped us be a, a more efficient company uh, as well. So it's a, it's a combination of business efficiency and, and environmental wins on the paper front. Before we get talking to the other subsectors that, that you report on and do a lot of great work in, let's just start with, with one uh, macro question, Scott, which is, to me, the ongoing fallacy that I love when experts like you and leaders like you come on and disarm this. A lot of people always say, when I ask them, why aren't you greener? Or why aren't you doing things more environmentally uh, friendly or responsibly? And the, the stock answer back in the day, eight, nine years ago, is that it's more expensive. Have you proven to Co-America that it's not more expensive and it actually you actually save money because of all your great environmental practices? Absolutely, absolutely. We've, uh, again, back to our, our value creation uh, approach, one of our tenets is, is around cost and risk reduction. And by reducing the amount of energy that we consume, the amount of paper that we purchase, um, all of those things are, are directly helping the bottom line. Uh, so the, 
the thought that uh, that, that it, being environmentally friendly or being green always costs more is uh, is I think a thing of the past in in large uh, in large uh, amounts. For our viewers and listeners who just joined us, we've got Scott Beckerman on with us. He's the Senior Vice President and Director of Corporate Sustainability from Co-America. To learn more about Co-America's sustainability program, you go to www.coamerica.com backslash sustainability. Scott, talk a little bit about the other subsectors. There's lots of great work you're doing, and I want to highlight some of these things. A little bit about solid waste. How much solid waste do you divert? You've got 500 buildings uh, that you're managing and that you're in and, you know, across this great country of ours. How do you, you know, how do you handle solid waste and how successful you've been in that division? Solid waste is, is interesting. You know, we're not a manufacturing company, so we don't have an opportunity <laughs> to easily go to, to zero waste uh, by, by yeah. changing our manufacturing processes or, or things like that. Um, but we have, you know, again, back to paper, uh, yeah. making sure that we're, we're capturing and recycling and securely destroying all of our paper. Um, you know, one of the things that we really, one of our most successful uh, community events that we host has been our shred days. And that's where we invite the public in to bring in their documents for secure destruction. Uh, mm. so we work with Iron Mountain, who is on site and shreds and recycles uh, all of their their documents uh, in in a way that helps really uh, prevent identity theft and helps secure information. Um, we've even ended up with a couple of Guinness Book of World Records uh, <laughs> and from our our Shred Day events last year in Dallas, uh, we collected, securely destroyed, and recycled over four hundred thousand pounds of paper in a single day. Wow, uh, which is about enough to run a two and a half inch ribbon of paper around the entire planet. So, uh, a lot of uh, a lot of paper that was recycled, um, but also we ask our, our uh, participants to come in and, and make a donation or contribute to one of the local food banks. So we're able to uh, really help uh, people, uh, the planet, and, and identity protection as well. So it's kind I of a triple it. bottom line success story for us. That's amazing. So we talked about paper a little bit, other solid waste, a little bit about greenhouse gas. Talk a little bit about some of the other very important things you're doing. How about water use uh, in your locations? Yeah, water is a, certainly a growing uh, issue and a growing risk in many communities. And with our footprint, particularly in, in places like Texas and California, which have been really drought-stricken uh, drought stricken states uh, recently, uh, that's become a real priority for us. So that's an example of where we've turned to technology to help us reduce our water consumption. We've piloted a number of irrigation projects to reduce the amount of water that we're using uh, for irrigation. And uh, those have seen dramatic results. Uh, a few of our pilots that we did saw reductions of water usage in you know, over 40%. Uh, so. Uh, some really amazing uh, strides that can be made with water. And again, that's water that we're not buying. Uh, it's water that's not uh, ending up as runoff and, and uh, getting into local streams and the like. So it's, uh, it's a, a win not only for us, but also for the communities that we operate in. You know, tr you know just for our, our listeners out there and some truth in advertising, um, my company is a client of Comerica, is a very happy client of Comerica's for now eight years and growing. And we work with your environmental services division, obviously, in your banking sector. And can you talk a little bit about the some of the uh, work you do, both in community and economic development loan dollars you put out, but also in environmental services and how Co-America is really fueling the green economy, both in commu local communities that you work in, economic development, and also environmental services. Well, certainly we're, we're committed to supporting the communities where we, where we operate. Uh, they're the communities where we live and work and play, and we want those to be vibrant and, and successful communities. One of the ways that we do that, as you mentioned, is, is our support of what we call environmentally beneficial lending. And right now we have roughly about a billion dollars in loan wow. commitments out to a broad range of companies uh, from recyclers to uh, renewable energy, from brownfield redevelopments to green buildings, as well as wow. all of the, uh, the brain power, the consulting and engineering work that goes into making those projects happen. It's really wow. been... A matter for us, not 
having specific green loans or products that we offer, yeah. but having the people uh, on staff that understand these industries and really can be that, that trusted advisor to our customers and provide the, the uh, financing and financial services that are needed to meet the, their needs as they try to green up their business or develop a green product or service. You know, Scott, obviously you've had massive success at Comerica in doing what you do, but nothing is done alone, and we know that sustainability is, and, and, and social responsibility is a journey. How many people are in your department working with you as the Director of Corporate Sustainability at Comerica? Well, my department alone is very small. Uh, myself and my colleague, Kristen, uh, make up right. our corporate uh, sustainability department. Wow. But we have a fantastic group of people throughout the corporation. We have uh, executives from all of our business lines participating wow. in our sustainability council. And that's the group where we really drive the action year over year through the various business units, whether it's our, our lending groups, human resources, marketing, our real estate uh, groups, our risk management groups, all of them have different components of our sustainability program. And really that's helped us to be successful by keeping our, our department small. Mm. We really needed to and ended up being successful in, in embedding sustainability into just how we do our jobs on a daily basis. So you've made it very cultural in DNA and you've built up a large group of sustainability champions within Co-America. That's right. That's right. And there's always more work to be done. That's certainly one of our challenges. Uh, you don't really win at sustainability. Uh, but as you make progress, really, we all win. Hey, talk a little bit about other challenges. What other challenges did you face when you were kicking this off and driving this through and making it cultural and DNA, sustainability, cultural and DNA at Comerica Bank? There are always challenges, and, and I like to call them <laughs> opportunities in disguise, right? Um, and the, the sustainability as a journey metaphor is, is maybe a little old and overused, but uh, yeah. I like Ray Anderson and his analogy of all of us climbing Mount Sustainability. Along the way, there's going to be some hiccups and some bumps. And, you know, one of the ones, as an example, that we did, um, we had a mix-up in procuring our paper, um, some, a classic case of, of jumbled acronyms, led us to buying uh, paper that really wasn't uh, our desired standard for sustainably sourced forest products. So we recognized that as an opportunity. Um, we went and worked with our procurement staff, not only to train them on paper purchases, but the importance of green certifications, and, and in particular, robust third-party certifications. Mm -hmm. So those are the kinds of things that, uh, you know, when we hit these bumps in the road, they often signal to us an opportunity to either improve communications or improve a process uh, within the bank uh, to, to improve our sustainability performance. Now that we're in 2015, give me one or two things that you've got your eye on that you want to try to accomplish in the next 12 to 24 months. Well, as I mentioned, we'll be, we'll be this year um, releasing some new goals, uh, stretching out to 2020 yeah. to help guide us in further reducing our footprint. Um, but as we look at our impact in, on, on the economy and our impact on the environment, um, we have to look beyond ourselves and we look to our customers and to our supply chain. So it's making sure that on the supply side, we are working with companies to uh, ensure that they are performing in a way that meets our expectations. We're scoring requests for proposals based on sustainability and diversity questions. Uh, we're scoring our existing suppliers based on what they're doing to be more sustainable and, more importantly, what they're doing to help us be more sustainable. We think it's a great way to engage the supply chain and really deepen a lot of relationships um, by having a positive impact on the environment. So for that's certainly one of them. For our young people out there that are listening, both the United States and around the world, what's some last, last thoughts and uh, some final thoughts of advice you could give them? The guys, people who want to be the next... Scott Beckerman's. Sure. Um, focus in on some core uh, technical skills, the, the skills around engineering, technology, science, mix in the business, add the sustainability and, and social elements, and really become that internal change agent within a corporation to end up being that sustainability director. Thank you, Scott Beckerman. He's the Senior Vice President, Director of Corporate Sustainability for Co-America. Learn more about Co-America www.coamerica.com backslash sustainability. Thank you, Scott, for being a sustainability superstar. You oh, are pleasure. truly living proof 
that green is good.